Now, why is it so difficult for somebody to control their drinking? Why do most of the population always find stopping drinking a fight? Well, the answer is actually very simple, and it's because there are four phases that people go through when they're trying to stop drinking. The problem is, is that most people don't know that these phases exist, and most people never reach it to the fourth phase, which is why we see so many relapses. It's why we see people struggling all the time. And if you're able to get to the fourth phase, I promise you right now, stopping drinking will not be difficult. It will be one of the easiest things you've ever done in your life. So today we're breaking down the four phases and I am going to get you to the fourth phase. But you need to understand all three phases before we get there. So don't skip to the end of the video, whatever you do. But by the end of this video, you are going to get to a place that you've never been before. So a quick introduction. My name is Leon Sylvester. I struggled with alcohol myself for 10 years. Uh, but the, for the past six years, I've not touched a drop. I've had no desire to drink. I've not done AA therapy, rehab, nothing like that. And the reason why is because I got to this fourth phase. Now, this is something I've helped over 400 clients do in my company, which is SoberClear.com. And if you want more information on accountability and a system to follow, just go to SoberClear.com to learn more about the work that we do and how we could potentially help you. But today I want to give it you for free. I want to actually help you get to a state of mind where you don't want to drink, where you can take it or leave it. So let's start at phase one. So everybody starts with phase one. It doesn't matter who you are, but phase one is the honeymoon period. And what I mean by this is when we start drinking alcohol, we start with this mindset that we gain something from drinking. So what I mean by this is that we have a drink and something good happens. We feel a good feeling. We feel relaxed. And listen, I'll get honest with you right now. When I first, one of the first times I got drunk, it was at a house party and I kissed a beautiful girl. I mean, of course, I'm then going to start associating alcohol with being smoother and more confident and, you know, a bit daring. So what happens when we start drinking is we start to gain all these positive associations with alcohol. I'm, I'm just smiling to myself thinking back to that party now, but anyway. But this is the thing is that positive association still kind of exists even in my mind. But we all start here, right? And listen, I started drinking young. I was like in my teens, but there's plenty of people that start drinking in their 20s, 30s, 40s. But there, there's always a reason. There's always something that they start to get from drinking. And if I was to approach somebody that was in this phase, or even if I was to go and talk to the young version of me that was in this phase, and I said, you shouldn't be doing that. That's doing nothing for you. I would have laughed you in the face. I would have said, are you stupid? Look what I found. It's like the cheat code to life. There is no talking to these people. There is no getting through to them. And it's OK. They're allowed to be there. Now, are there people that live their entire life in phase one? Maybe, maybe 0.1% of the population. There aren't many at all, if any at all. I don't personally know of a single person that's still in that phase. But when we start drinking, we think that that's how it's always going to be. And also in this phase, here's another point that I've not brought up. But in this phase, we tell ourselves that we can quit whenever we want. And we can. We do believe this. But how many people actually quit in this phase. Isn't that a weird thing? We tell ourselves we can quit, but then we always get into the next phase, which is phase two. Now, phase two is when the drinking started to slowly increase. See, how many of us started drinking once a week and then it's twice a week? Or we drink two drinks and then it's three drinks. And it just slowly starts to build up out of nowhere. Now, the gap between phase one and phase two can be a week, it could be a month, it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years. But unless somebody stops drinking in phase one, on a long enough time horizon, they will reach phase two, everybody. Because the nature of any drug is for you to take one and then take another and another and another. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people that live in phase one for 80 years. You know, there's that argument of the grandma that drinks like one glass of wine, you know, every Christmas. But this is like an anomaly, right? I, I hate it when people say that. Oh, I just want to be able to control my drinking like my grandma does. It's like, come on. We get to phase two and what happens is because we're drinking increasing amounts of alcohol, negative things start happening in our life. Usually people will try and stop or reduce their drinking. Once they realize they start having this dialogue and they start to say, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I should drink less. And it becomes this battle that people have in their mind. And this is when people start relying on willpower to not drink. Now, this is the most popular way that people try and stop drinking. They just grit through it, right? They use their own strength and they just resist the cravings, resist the urge and don't drink. But the problem with using willpower is that it never seems to work. Now, don't get me wrong. It can work. It's worked for me. It's worked for seven, eight, nine months. I just didn't drink. I just resisted. But the problem is that I never addressed the root cause. I never got to phase four, which we're definitely going to get to. Just wait. But every time I tried to stop drinking alcohol with willpower, I always felt like I was missing out on something. See, phase two is one of the worst phases to be in because now you realize you're stuck. Now you start to think, oh dear. Now don't get me wrong, some people live their entire life in phase two. They keep toying with the idea of not drinking, trying it a little bit, but it never gets 
truly bad enough to get into phase three. It doesn't need to get bad enough, right? You can still fix the issue. In fact, you can go straight from phase two to phase four. There's, you can 100% do that. So if phase three doesn't 100% resonate with you, just bear with me. But if somebody gets into enough pain with drinking and they keep trying to fix it on their own and it doesn't work, they can move into phase three. So in phase three, this is when we know that we're stuck. We know that stopping drinking with willpower is not working. And we know that stopping drinking on our own is not working. So we go to this new phase. And this is when we're actively seeking out a solution to the problem. At this point, some people go to the doctor. They say, doctor, I want to help stopping drinking. What can you do for me? Well, let's get you to a therapist, right? Let's get you some medication, some naltrexone. So you might try that. You might go to a friend of yours that doesn't drink. And this friend is like, man, do you know what saved my life? Alcoholics Anonymous, come to a meeting. Let me show you how it works. You might start Googling, right? You might start looking for a solution. You might be watching this YouTube channel, reading some books. You're trying to figure out why can't you stop drinking? Why can't you drink less than everybody else? And you're looking for a way out of the pain. Now, many people can stop drinking in this phase. My mum stopped drinking in phase three. She went to Alcoholics Anonymous. She's been in that phase for 20 plus years. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't get sober in phase three. Some people, they check themselves into a rehab. They get out. They don't drink again. This happens. But what society don't talk about in phase three is how whatever method you use, you never address the root cause of the drinking. So whatever you do, you always feel this sense of missing out. You go to AA, you sit in a circle, you talk about, you know, the war stories, the bad things that happened, but then, you know, you're, you're told to actively avoid going out to bars, going to a nightclub, going out with friends that drink. You should keep sober company, right? And so what happens is we feel this feeling of missing out for a long, long time. And for me, when I went to AA, I knew that I didn't want to live my life this way. I didn't want to go to meetings for the rest of my life. And every single time I wanted to drink, I had to ask God to help me and, and beg God to get me through this craving. If I had to live my life that way forever, it, it, listen, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm saying it can be helpful for some people. It just wasn't for me. I didn't want to live my life that way. I knew there had to be another way. Which leads me to the fourth and final phase. And this is the phase that will change everything for you. I am in the fourth phase. And what I mean by this is I didn't do any of those previous things. I tried them, but they didn't work for me, but I still stopped drinking. But most importantly, what I don't have that everybody else has is I don't have a desire to drink. You, and I swear on my life, you could not pay me $100,000 to drink a pint of beer. Test me, because I know that that will cost me everything, because I understand the nature of how drugs work. I also understand the nature of alcohol. I understand how it's an addictive, poisonous drug that will do nothing for me. And I have a totally different belief system to most of the population. Now, how do you achieve this? How do you get into the fourth phase? Well, it's simple. You use a mental model. The way I did this is I use something called first principles thinking. Now, one way to describe this is with Elon Musk. And when Elon Musk was trying to build a rocket, he asked society, how much does it cost to build a rocket? They said $65 million, but he broke a rocket down into its first principles. He looked at the factory, the staff, the materials, the company, whatever, and he worked out it costs just $6 million. So it was like literally saving $59 million as a result of doing first principles thinking. First principles is kind of a physics way of looking at the world. And what that really means is you kind of boil things down to the most fundamental truths and, and say, okay, what are we sure is true or, or as sure as possible is true? And then reason up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes a lot more mental energy. And in our instance, it would mean ignoring the previous three phases, ignoring all of those people and breaking the problem down into its component parts. And it's studying these individual component parts of an alcohol problem and changing our belief system. So how can you do that? Well, you can invest in courses, invest in books, invest your time into figuring it out. See, phase four takes time. I'm not saying it's an instant fix. It will take hours of your time researching, studying, you know, and it's painful work. It's hard to basically say, okay, maybe what I've known up until this point isn't true. But I swear on my life, this is the highest leverage activity that you can do if you're suffering with a drinking issue. Because once it's done, it's fixed. The problem is fixed in your life, which means that you can just get on with things. Like if you had a gluten intolerance and you ate a burger and the bread gave you a bad stomach the next day, you're not going to have to sit in meetings and not eat bread. No, you just stop eating the bread. It's a problem solved and you're moving on with your life. But with alcohol, nobody does this. They fight and fight and fight because they're never able to shift their beliefs to see alcohol for what it is. Now, listen. If you want help doing this, I've developed a system that uses first principles thinking to help you get into a state of mind where it's almost like somebody flicks a switch in your brain, boom, the problem solved. And I know that sounds hard to believe, but I've done this for over 400 clients. We have over a 92% success rate. And right now I want to invite you to do it with me as well. I want to take you through my full system where I help you get into this final phase. You can do this alone but it's just gonna be harder, it's gonna cost more money, it's gonna cost more time. And if we do it together, it's just gonna be way faster and way more fun. So if you want help 
What I'm going to invite you to do is click the link in the description of this video or just go to soberclear.com forward slash call, answer the questions and book a call. We will jump on a call and I will explain how we are going to get you from where you are into this new phase. And I'll explain how we can do it in as little as 48 hours. Some people take 48 hours, some people might take a week. It doesn't matter. It's different for different people, but it's possible to do it quickly. And if you've made it through to this point in the video, something's resonated with you. You're not like everybody else. Most people would have clicked off the video in the first five seconds, but you've made it this far. But right now, you need to make a choice. It's the only thing I can't do for you. The only thing I can't do is click the link in the description, answer the questions and book a call. I can show you everything. I can show you how to do it, but you need to make a decision. And the decision starts right now by clicking the link down below. You will not regret this. It might be scary. It might be uncomfortable. You might not feel 100% ready, but I promise you, if you click the link down below tonight, when you go to bed, you will have known that you've taken a step in the right direction. So please click the link down below. Can't wait to speak with you. I'll speak with you soon and have a great day.